remember the Klebsia pneumoniae can get infected into the person who has uh, pre-existing or underlying COPD or is alcoholic. Let me take, take you over there. So this is uh, Klebsiella pneumoniae. So Klebsiella pneumoniae, this are Helicobacter, Vibrio cholerae, then Campylobacter and this is the Klebsiella. So if you talk about the Klebsiella, Klebsiella has special pneumonia, abscess in the lung liver, current disease sputum and that is very important actually. I have told previously also they are have talking this gelatinous bloody sputum. So they can be covered in the diabetes and alcoholic patient. So gram negative intestinal flora causing low bar pneumonia in patient with alcohol overuse and patient with diabetes when aspirated very mucoid colonies caused by amendment polysaccharide dark red coronary sputum also caused of nosocomal UTI associated in evolution of MDR. So the person who can develop this Klebsiella pneumonia infection are diabetic patient, alcohol overuse patient and sometime underlying COPD patient. So what is what is your diagnosis? Do you have alcoholic? The number one is your answer. Although if there is other homeless, hiker, IV drug user, veterinarian, this doesn't indicate COPD or diabetes. So your answer is alcoholic. So you have this sense. This is your answer. We has developed this Klebsiella pneumonia induced Klebsiella pneumonia induced pneumonia that has caused this gelatinous and bloody sputum and there is shortness of breath with productive cough. Let's move again forward. There is an infant, so there is a newborn baby present with fever, convulsion, neutral uh, rigidity during the first month of life. So there is a newborn who has a feature of this meningitis, this fever, convulsion and neck rigidity. Which of the following isn't is most likely the cause? And this is the, more, this is the first degree question you can say. This is the very much straightforward question that a person has asked. That's you, this type of question is very rarely found in the USMLE. But you have to understand infant present with fever, convulsion, and nuchal rigidity during the first month of life. So they are saying infant with meningitis. Now you have to say, you have to identify which, you have to remember which is the most common organism that has caused this neonatal meningitis, neonatal sepsis with meningitis or say neonatal meningitis and the organism you remember, if you remember that is the Streptococcus agalecti. So Streptococcus, Streptococcus agalecti is the most common organism to cause newborn infant meningitis. There are, then the second most cause or other are like Listeria, E. coli, these are the second other cause. These are the rods, they are gram positive, gram negative but the most common is gram positive cocci that is beta hemolytic and that is Streptococcus agalecti. So this is should be your E. coli? No. This is Haemophilus influenzae? No. Although all organisms, this E. coli say or Haemophilus influenzae or Listeria monocytogens or Streptococcus pneumoniae, they all can cause you meningitis. But the most commonest one is Streptococcus agalecti for infant. If you talk about the adult, then Nigeria meningitis or say Haemophilus influenzae will come into role. If you talk about the rods, then Listeria and E. coli comes into the role in the extreme appearances in the infant and elderly people. So. The answer is Streptococcus agalecti. Moving forward, okay. So now we have another question where a 60 year old man is hospitalized following a stroke and develop high grade fever with chill. So there is a old man who has a stroke and develop fever with chill. She is catheterized, uh, this is a woman, she is catheterized due to urinary incontinence and receives cephalosporin for treatment of pneumonia. So there is a 60 years old female with fever and chill and she has received this cephalosporin for pneumonia and also there is a catheterization in situ. Blood culture and gram stain are performed by the laboratory and the organism isolated are gram positive cocci that are catalyst negative and capable of growth in 6.5% sodium chloride. So when you talk about the gram positive cocci that are catalyst negative so obviously they come on the streptococcus group and in the streptococcus group there are alpha hemolytic, beta hemolytic and non hemolytic or gamma hemolytic. In gamma hemolytic there was in streptococcus bovis and enterococcus species. Among that we can differentiate it on the basis of the 6.5% NSL growth and those who can grow in 6.5% of NSL is called is enterococcus species, enterococcus fecalis, enterococcus officium. So there must be enterococcus species your answer. Let me what which of the following they have question is which of the following is the most likely causative agent. So they are talking directly, they have direct they are asking directly about the bacteria. So you have to identify the bacteria and that is the enterococcus fecalis. If you want to take me over the there, then I'll take you over there. So streptococcus bovis. Now see. Sorry. 
see over here so this is the organism the cocci so that, that this catalase positive becomes streptococcus we are talking about the catalase negative that lead to the streptococcus group in the streptococcus group that leads to this catalase negative so this is the streptococcus group in a streptococcus group we know that we have alpha hemolytic beta hemolytic and gamma hemolytic no hemolysis among that two group is streptococcus bovis and enterococcus species among them that grows in 6.5 percent nacl is enterococcus species so your answer is enterococcus so let me go over there hope you have understood gram positive catalase negative in the false in the streptococcus group among that grows in 6.5 percent or no hemolysis group in 6.5 percent is your enterococcus species so our answer would be thus enterococcus species so these are organism isolated gram positive cocci that are catalase negative false in the streptococcus and capable of growth in 6.5 percent sodium chloride and they are leading to the enterococcus species Moving again forward, there is another question like 35 year old man who is positive for HIV develops sepsis with subsequent development of necrotic lesion on the buttock that has a black center and erythematous margin. Which of the following is the most likely cause to present? If you remember one of the organism, one of the bug called Pseudomonas aeruginosa that has the characteristic scar mark. If you, if you remember the Pseudomonas uh, we have gone into tuberculosis, leprosy, then let me talk, take you to the Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Nigeria, Hemophilus, Influenzae, Barcolderia, Legionella, Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So in Pseudomonas aeruginosa, there is a term called ichthyma gangrenosum, rapidly progressive necrotic cutaneous lesion caused by Pseudomonas bacteria, bacteremia. So if a person has Pseudomonas blood infection bacteremia in that patient in the skin there will be a, one lesion called the ichthyma gang gangrenosum that is a rapidly progressive skin necrotic cutaneous lesion so there is a black so you can see over here this is the black scar like uh, feature that develops on the skin due to the pseudomonas infection underlying bacterial pseudomonal infection and that is known as the term ichthyma gang gangrenosum so here is also same thing there is the erythematous margin lesion on the necrotic lesion on the buttock that has a black center which is ichthyma gangrenosum and we know ichthyma gangrenosum is a feature of the pseudomonas bacteremia so which of the following is the most likely causative agent and we know this is the pseudomonas aeruginosa so hope you know you don't have any problem in finding the answer okay so all the information that is given on the first aid are very very important even it's an every single point so that you have to buy hard by yourself we will we have revised we have made easy for you so you have to go back to your all the lectures all the video and then you have to uh, revise again and again so let's come to the another question that is a 15 year old girl developed sore throat fever ARA of approximately one week duration so there is a localized infection of your uh, throat say throat ear and fever examine and upon examination by her physician erythematous rash is noted covering her most of her body and tongue appears bright red so there is a this 15 year old girl with rash all over her body with uh, this sore throat earache fever and rash all over the body with the addition of tongue appears bright red that is strawberry tongue and these all are the feature of your scarlet fever and scarlet fever is caused by streptococcus pyogenes so the your answer is streptococcus pyogenes and if you remember by the tree diagram streptococcus pyogenes are actually what is the streptococcus pyogenes streptococcus pyogenes was So, Streptococcus pyogenes was a bacteria, bacteria that is a gram positive, catalase negative. So, this we can fall on the Streptococcus. And in Streptococcus, it was the beta hemolytic group. And in beta hemolytic group, you will find this Streptococcus pyogenes. So, let me go to the tree diagram to make you more understandable. So, these are the cocci, gram positive, cocci, catalase negative, Streptococcus. And among them, beta hemolytic. In beta hemolytic, this is the Streptococcus agalitin, Streptococcus pyogenes, Streptococcus pyogenes is this bacitracin sensitive so these are the information now from here you have to understand the streptococcus pyogenes causing the scarlet fever so this is the gram positive cocos alpha hemolytic not gram positive cocos beta hemolytic yes catalase negative yes 
gram positive cocos alpha hemolytic catalyst positive we are not dealing with this gram positive cocos beta hemolytic catalyst positive this is staphylococcus aureus so our answer should be gram positive cocos beta hemolytic and catalyst negative so this all are the your information that will lead to the streptococcus pyogenes infection so by streptococcus pyogenes are catalyst negative these are the cocci gram positive cocci that is catalyst negative and beta hemolytic so all this your feature is leading to streptococcus pyogenes or streptococcus agalacti and this is the infection or due to streptococcus pyogenes so you have the diagnosis okay they can further add this the basic trypsin sensitive or resistant so in we can reach to the actually pinpoint diagnosis but this will be their answer okay so how many questions do we have left now two more questions so let's finish it and then now we will uh, start a new chapter new uh, by the new means okay by with a new enthusiasm